It's that time of the week again when we discuss all of the ways in which the media covers itself in glory. And joining us this week is a friend of our show and host of the Katie Halper Show and co-host of the Useful Idiots podcast, the one and only Katie Halper. Great to see you, Katie. Hi, you too. Um, so let's start with uh, this Karen Bass situation. So of the likely Joe Biden VP nominees, Karen is probably the most progressive, okay? It's a relatively low yeah. bar, let's be clear. She's a fairly pragmatist, pragmatic person. Nancy Pelosi recommended her to the Biden team, so let's not go crazy about how progressive she would be if oh, she wow. was picked. Yeah. But um, here at the end of the selection process, there's been all kinds of oppo dropped about Karen Bass. And one in particular that really caught both of our attention was this Politico piece about how she gave a eulogy at the funeral of someone she knew who was a Communist Party leader. Um, Katie, what is your reaction to this? I mean, this combined with uh, Chuck Todd's uh, hammering and sickling of her, I think really speak to the uh, hypocrisy, double standards, and ideology of the mainstream media. Um, this is an issue that people pretend is um, kind of electorally relevant. It's an issue where the media pretends they're just they're just describing reality when, of course, what they're doing is trying to create a reality. They're trying to pretend that this is a major issue. In fact, Chuck Rocha was on your on this very show and pointed out that uh, I believe it was raised the Cuban American slash Cuban Miami turnout uh, would by 10 points would uh, raise a half a point of black turnout. So this is not, not a question of ability or electability. It's really a question of kind of red baiting and McCarthyism and Cold War ideology. And watching Chuck Todd bring this up and, and her comments and Karen Bass's comments on Cuba when Castro died, um, I'm reminded of his ridiculous comments about Bernie Sanders when he said to Sanders, I still can't believe it, he actually said to him that, you know, he's going to be uh, uh, hammered and sickled by the right wing. And as oh, Sanders God. responded very, very uh, um, correctly and insightfully, he said, well, I expect that from the right. I don't expect that from the media. That was, you know, uh, that was probably wishful thinking on, on Sanders' part. But what we have a time and time again, and we saw this with um, Joanne Reed, we saw this with Chris, Chris Matthews, we see this with Chuck Todd, it is, is the media pretending that these issues are going to be used against Sanders by the right, but what they're actually doing is providing the talking points and the fodder for the right wing. And again, I mean, I made a video about this and I was uh, during a uh, part of my show and, uh, you know, the idea that that's a haunting issue, um, Sanders, for instance, going to Nicaragua to side against the Contras who were awful and all, all human rights organizations at the time and now admit that they were way worse than the Sandinistas. It's really not comparable. Um, uh, watching uh, uh, Chuck Todd's treatment of Sanders uh, and pretend, where he pretends that that's an issue uh, is, is just grotesque, honestly. And we saw the New York Times do this too. And again, it's this issue where, what about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden? Like that's not an issue the right wing is going to use. The other thing, and you're so right to point out, it's not an electorally relevant issue. I mean, Bernie Sanders ultimately won Cuban voters, by the way, in the Democratic right. primary in Florida after all of that. But it also, to me, speaks to the hollow nature of how they've covered the Veep stakes. They've barely dug into anyone's record of actual policy right. and what they've done with their power and how they've used it. Instead, they go with these, like, sensational guilt by association red bait crap as if yeah. that is yeah. more relevant than, for example, what Kamala Harris did when she was AG of California. Right. Or Susan Rice's role in Iraq or Rwanda. Um, yeah, exactly. The, the substantive policy things. And also the irony is, again, they pretend it's so you're right. There are two levels, right? They stick to kind of very superficial sensationalist um, issues or, or, or gestures even. And they don't talk about the important things. And of course, what Americans do care about, they don't like endless wars. Right. And you have Susan Rice being part of that kind of uh, machine, um, literally the, you know, uh, uh, what is it? What did I can't believe I can't remember now. Uh, Eisenhower talked about beware the criminal. Oh, 
uh, military industrial no, complex. Military industrial industrial complex. complex. Thanks. Yeah, I'm so used to saying criminal industrial complex because that's another. Thing. Yeah, beware the military industrial complex. And of course, Rice was a major architect of that. Um, and that doesn't get any coverage. Why not? That's is that less is that less important than what Karen Bass says at a funeral? Is that less important than uh, Karen Bass as a 19 year old going to Cuba to help like build houses and and you know educate people and imp increase literacy among Cubans? Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, like, all of these hits on Karen Bass actually made me be like, oh, maybe I wouldn't mind if Karen Bass was the VP. But the also, for her. <laughs> that also Long means that impressive. there is absolutely no way that she'll ultimately be selected is also what that means. Um, the last thing I wanted to get your thoughts on is a producer I actually knew at MSNBC, Ariana Peccary, wrote, uh, she resigned, and she wrote a long piece about why she uh, can no longer work at the network. And the, the, the fundamental part of her critique is essentially like a, a sort of capitalist critique. She says the producers will choose a topic or story without, re without regard for how they will rate. But that is the exception, not the rule, due to the simple structure of the industry, the desire to charge more money for commercials, as well as the ratings bonuses that top tier decision makers earn. They always relapse into their old profitable programming habits. Now, part of this story is like Fox News and the right grabbed on to MSNBC right. producer quits and says all these things. But what she's actually critiquing is not just MSNBC. It's the entire industry and the fact that it's this ratings generating machine that substitutes profit motive for actually wanting to educate and inform the public. Exactly. And this kind of uh, is, is a great, this dovetails really nicely with the uh, Karen Bass story we were just talking about, right? Um, because it's it's clickable, it's sensationalist, and it doesn't actually get into any issues. And she says, um, you, as you as you point out, it's kind of a meta story, right? She writes this uh, letter of resignation, explaining. Uh, she says that the, this cancer um, stokes national division, even in the, in the middle of a civil rights crisis. This model blocks diversity of thought and content because the networks have incentive to amplify fringe voices and events at the expense of others, all because it pumps up the ratings. And then, of course. Uh, Fox News covers it, as she says. Uh, they couldn't help but to turn my statement into a divisive piece of clickbait. Um, as, it, as it turns out, Fox News in, inadvertently proved me right. The headlines skewed the intention of my piece, and they removed almost all the context in which I explained the systemic nature of the problem. That is unfortunate, mm -hmm. but not surprising. So again, it's, it's, I mean, Fox News showed, didn't just tell, but showed precisely the problem that she was talking about. And I think it is really important to point out that it, this is a systemic industry-wide issue. And this is something that my uh, Useful Idiots co-host uh, Matt Taibbi has written about in a lot, and especially in his book Hate Inc., which really focuses on this issue. But this, combined with the really like vapid um, qu questioning and framing of Karen Bass, I think is a perfect combination of a story. Yeah, so true and so well said, Katie. Always great to see you. Thank you. Thanks, you too. A lot more rising for you after this.